investigation is underway to determine what caused the driver of a truck to slam into a utility pole, then plunge into Holly Eva Harbor last night, injuring three teens. We have new photos into our newsroom of the truck being removed from the water. <laughs> The crash happened just before 7 p.m. near Haleiwa Boat Harbor. Honolulu EMS said three teenage boys were in the vehicle when it hit a pole, then drove into the ocean. Officials said they were able to self-extricate and were found on shore when paramedics arrived on scene. EMS said a 17-year-old boy suffered serious injuries and was rushed to the hospital. A pair of 16-year-old boys were also treated but are considered to be in stable condition. No word yet on what caused the crash. The down pole also temporarily knocked out power to nearly 1,000 HECO customers, but power has since been restored. An investigation is underway after a two-alarm house fire in Pearl City. Fire crews responded to the home on Komomai Drive just after 2 a.m. It took about half an hour to get the flames under control, but you can see that it caused major damage. We're told EMS was also sent to the scene, but we haven't received any reports of injuries. The Red Cross is helping out the five people who live there. Ala Moana acid attack suspect Sebastian McQuan has been hearing voices, according to his attorney. A judge yesterday ordered a physical and mental evaluation for McQuan, and his lawyer said he was previously diagnosed with mental illness and was hospitalized last September for hearing voices. The court filing says he is on antipsychotic medication at OCCC. McQuan is accused of throwing a chemical liquid on a Chinese language teacher in January, leaving her in critical condition. GPS data shows the speed and location of four HPD officers during an unauthorized chase that ended with half a dozen people critically or seriously injured. The information is part of the prosecution's exhibit list and it shows the vehicles past the crash scene without stopping. Chief investigative reporter Lynn Kwano shows us how this evidence is expected to be used in the upcoming trial. The GPS technology is clear. The officers drove away from the crash site, met up at a school until the 911 calls came in. Court records say the AVL, or Automated Vehicle Locator, showed the four officers involved were at Maili Beach Park to break up a party on September 21st at 3.42 in the morning. Hey. The AVL shows three of them on the move shortly after, allegedly chasing the white sedan at speeds near or above 100 miles an hour at times. The Honolulu Prosecutor's Office plans to use the technology when trial starts in June. Joshua Nahulu is charged with the most serious crime. He's accused of causing the crash that injured everyone in the car, while the other defendants are accused of covering it up. All but one have been fired from the department. The court filing shows three HPD vehicles were racing down Farrington Highway. The white sedan crashed just west of Orange Street at 3.46 a.m. The AVL data shows shortly after that, three HPD vehicles drove past the crash scene, turning Malka on Jade Street. At Lahaina Street, they all headed east and continued until Makaha Valley Road. They turned back onto Farrington Highway, but instead of going to the scene to help the critically wounded occupants, the technology shows they drove the opposite direction. At 3.50 a.m., four minutes after the crash, the AVL shows Nahulu, Jake Bartolome and Eric Smith started to gather at Waianae Middle School. Joining them was the fourth defendant, Officer Robert Lewis. It's a big linchpin, it is, but um, as we know from trials, this is just one piece of evidence and the jury will have to consider all of the evidence as a whole, um, but some evidence is much more valuable than others. The big thing about this type of evidence is it's irrefutable. They're gonna have to come up with a reason to explain this data and why it says what it says. 
The defense is contesting witness statements that Nahulu bumped the sedan before it spun out, rolling through the field. An accident reconstruction expert for the prosecution said he found no evidence of damage or paint transfer that would show an impact with Officer Nahulu's subsidized SUV. The expert also found possible problems with the braking system of the sedan that could have caused the driver to lose control. Six people, including teens, suffered critical and serious injuries all have permanent damage in various degrees. The city has settled two of the three civil lawsuits connected to the case for a total of $17 million. I'm Lynn Kawano, Hawaii News Now. Next week will mark eight months since the Maui wildfires. Since last August, there has been an outpouring of support and aid for survivors who are trying to get back to some sense of normalcy. As of now, more than $343 million of federal assistance has been approved for survivors. That money will go to affected homeowners, renters, businesses, and other needs. In addition, citizens of the freely associated state may now apply for FEMA aid. COFA citizens can apply by calling the number on your screen or by visiting the Lahaina Disaster Recovery Center. A new school opened in West Maui on Monday for about 350 students who were displaced by the Lahaina wildfire. The temporary $78 million campus is at Pule Lehua, right below the Kapalua Airport. The Army Corps of Engineers designed it and Pono Aina Management built it in just 95 days. The students here are from King Kamehameha III Elementary School, which was destroyed in August. Before this temporary school was built, they were sharing classrooms at Princess Nahi Ena Ena Elementary. To welcome our teachers, to welcome our staff. To um. <laughs> think so many people who have helped bring this day. The campus will be used for at least the next five years. The governor says rebuilding the original school on Front Street will be challenging because of rising ocean levels. Instead, the state wants to build a cultural corridor and restore fish ponds in that area. In Waikiki, the state wants to take sand from a catamaran channel and put it on the shoreline fronting several luxury hotels. Eddie Dowd takes a look at the plan and tells us why there's a sense of urgency. This is what Waikiki Beach looks like from the Royal Hawaiian Hotel all the way to the Honolulu Zoo. But if you turn the camera just 180 degrees, you can see much of the beach is gone, taken by coastal erosion. This is what it takes to cross the coastline near the Halukulani Hotel. And this is what it looked like five years ago when we reported on severe erosion near that same spot. Alex Antigan of Australia got a taste of Hawaii's struggle with rising ocean levels. I thought it was surprising seeing it. I was Straight definitely away, yeah. noticed it more down this side, especially when you went past the break wall just there, it dropped off to nothing. It's more than a public safety hazard. Outrigger Hospitality Group President Jeff Wagoner says there are ripple effects. Think about Waikiki in general. If there's no beach, then they're going to Lanikai. They're going to Kailua. And that's not the intent of tourism, is to have them all over the islands. It's to keep them in the resort district. Wagoner wants the state to put in another groin, like the one near the Royal Hawaiian Hotel built in 2020. This is what it looked like before that. In 2021, the state actually proposed five new groins to create four separate beach areas from the Outrigger Reef down to the Sheraton Waikiki. DONR is still working on an environmental impact statement and couldn't confirm the final proposal. State Representative Adrian Tam is hesitant to add new groins. It needs significant funding. I don't know where I'm at in terms of supporting groins right now because there are some environmental impacts. DONR told us that for now it plans to conduct a small-scale beach restoration project using sand recovered from the Catamaran Canal. Eddie Dowd, Hawaii News Now. The Central World Kitchen Charity has paused critical humanitarian efforts in Gaza after an Israeli strike killed seven workers, including an American. Natalie Brand has the latest. The humanitarian workers were killed hours after bringing a new shipment of food into northern Gaza, one of their vehicles appearing to take a direct hit. 
The World Central Kitchen has now suspended its aid work in the war-torn region. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called it a tragic case of Israeli forces unintentionally hitting innocent people, saying this happens during war. Hey, this is Omi and Chef Olivier. We're at the Jirabalaf kitchen. One of the victims has been identified as Australian Zomi Frankamp. Australia's Prime Minister is demanding accountability. This is a human tragedy that should never have occurred. That is completely unacceptable. Chef Jose Andres, who founded World Central Kitchen, posted on social media that he's heartbroken, saying the Israeli government needs to stop this indiscriminate killing and stop using food as a weapon. World Central Kitchen said it had coordinated its movements with the Israeli military. His charity had built a makeshift pier, shipping hundreds of tons of food into the Gaza Strip as the UN warns of famine in the region. They have been doing extraordinary, brave work. Secretary of State Antony Blinken addressed the strike while traveling in France. They show the best of what humanity has to offer when the going really gets tough. They have to be protected. Prime Minister Netanyahu says he's in contact with the governments of the killed workers and will do everything to ensure this does not happen again. Natalie Brand, CBS News. Former President Donald Trump is back on the campaign trail, visiting a couple of key battleground states. And he's focusing on an issue he believes is a winning one for him, immigration. Meanwhile, President Biden's campaign is focusing on an issue that it believes will be key in November, which is abortion rights. Skyler Henry has both sides. Voters in Wisconsin headed to the polls, one of four states holding presidential primary contests Tuesday. And in just a few months, Wisconsin will be a pivotal swing state in the general election. That's why former President Trump is holding a rally in Green Bay. It looks uh, very, very good. But first, he stopped in another critical battleground, Michigan, where he talked about immigration with local officials. When I left, it was a trickle. And then you see it like going at levels that we've never seen before. It's like straight up illegal immigration into our country. The Trump campaign and the RNC also launched a new website dedicated to criticizing Biden's immigration policies. While the Trump campaign is hoping immigration will be a winning issue in the Midwest, the Biden campaign says a recent court ruling could put a big southern state in play for them. The Florida Supreme Court upheld the state's six-week abortion ban, but it also allowed a November ballot measure that could enshrine abortion rights in the state's constitution, an issue that could boost Democrats' turnout. I will be voting this November. If I have to be in there with my crutches or my wheelchair, I will be there. The Biden campaign is trying to tie Trump to restrictive abortion policies. Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. Even releasing a new campaign commercial, highlighting their differences on abortion. I'm running to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. Democrats are also working to get abortion rights on the ballots in other key states, including Arizona and Nevada. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. April is Volunteer Month in Hawaii, and several nonprofits are trying to get the word out about opportunities to help. Casey Lund is in Liliha with more. And that's what Volunteer Month in Hawaii is all about, making a difference. You know, Volunteer Month actually was just a week not long ago, but now an entire month long in April. And we're excited to share some of the opportunities, and there are plenty of them throughout the state. I'm here with Keone Kealoha, as well as Lori Lau. Keone's from uh, Kanu, Hawaii. And, and we're here at Alana Kila Meals on Wheels. What a great way to kick off a Volunteer Month. This is an organization that really thrives on volunteers, right? Yeah, I just learned they only have five staff and deliver thousands and thousands of meals around the island. So vol without volunteers, it wouldn't be able to take care of all of the folks that need those meals, you know? Yeah, and I want to talk to Lori in just a moment about some of maybe the specific things that they need, what an, a good volunteer looks like for them as far as time commitment. But I want to ask you before we get to that, um, what this month is all about and what you want people to know. Uh, we're also talking about engaging young people across the state. Um, what do you want people to know as we get into April here? Well, it's, uh, it's Volunteer Month in Hawaii, and there's literally over 300 nonprofits hosting thousands of events during this month. So there's no excuse. There's something for you, whether you want to get outside and do something in the environment, plant some native trees, clean up a beach, if you want to help some seniors, if you want to serve food. There's so many opportunities. To I think one thing that we could also talk about might be valuable is that it's not just 
uh, manual labor, the Meals on Wheels type of volunteering. If you, if you have offer professional services, maybe you have a, a law firm or you're an accountant, um, there's all kinds of needs for that as well throughout our nonprofit system, right? Yeah, so there's a section on the site that's for remote opportunities. So you can do those at a distance, even if you don't live in Hawaii. Maybe you're just visiting, but you want to get back. Um, but there's also some like professional services opportunities listed under that section. So another way you can get, you don't have to go out physically if you only have a limited time, or maybe you got a big family you got to take care of. You could do this at home on the weekend when you have some free time. Very know. good. Uh, I want to thank you for being with us today. And, and I want to also talk to Lori a little bit about um, some of the specific opportunities that you folks have at uh, Meals on Wheels here. Um, yes. Yeah, so we have uh, various opportunities, um, especially for groups or people that can only volunteer temporarily. We have packing, which is help getting the meals ready to go out. Uh, for volunteers that have a weekly couple of hour commitment, they can help us to deliver the meals. And then we also have um, group opportunities on Saturdays and special events. And, and for your volunteers, I imagine that, uh, and for the people that they serve, this is much more than just bringing them food, right? Oh, it's a lifeline. Um, truly, there's the food, but there's also the relationship, the wellness check. Um, knowing that they're not forgotten, um, we really value our kapuna and want to make sure that um, we take care of them. Lori Kony, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, again, if you want to learn more about what Larkili Meals on Wheels has to offer or any of the other nonprofits throughout our state, we have all the details. Uh, Kanu Hawaii's website is linked up to ours at hawaiinewsnow.com. We'll send things back into the studio for now. Hey everyone, Davis here in the Digital Center now. An important project is underway in Hawaii to save some of the oldest ukulele in existence. It's a painstaking process that involves recording the sounds of those old ukulele. That work is being featured in my new documentary, The Uk Hawaii's Instrument. If you missed it, don't worry, you can catch the entire documentary plus extended performances and videos, head to our website at hawaiinewsnow.com or scan the QR code on your screen. And got lots of good feedback on that documentary. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out on our website, hawaiinewsnow.com. All right, taking a live look out at Hilo with our cams around the state. Lots of clouds there, but some sunshine trying to peek through as we get ready for Merry Monarch Festival Week. Our coverage from Hilo begins tomorrow morning, so stay tuned for that. We're going to have your first alert forecast and a check on some Merry Monarch news coming up after this quick break. As I gazed out to the sun beyond the shore, the memories of the days long before come crashing like the waves. It makes me miss those days, and now I want to go back. To my home in Okihi. The Sunday mornings go being sad beneath our feet. Those playful waters always there to ease the heat. Hawaiian music filled the street. South 
How's it on this Tuesday? The breezy winds continue to buffet the state, expected to get even stronger from tomorrow through Friday. Wind advisories could be posted at that time. And because of this disturbance, there's a higher chance for more rainfall for Koi and Oahu, maybe starting around the Thursday, Friday time frame. So watch for that. Otherwise, we got those usual windward and mocha showers, uh, light to moderate rainfall totals. The good thing is that with the breezy winds, the rain's moving out rather quickly. That does and allow for big rainfall buildup. So flooding not expected to be an issue, although it is going to be very windy from tomorrow on. Wind advisories could be posted. Spotty power outages are possible. So today, though, winds will be running about 15 to 25 miles an hour, and we're expecting drier conditions by lunchtime, especially for leeward sides where only isolated showers are expected. And as far as the surf, in response to the building uh, winds, we're going to get a building trade wind swell, five to seven feet today could even get to advisory levels by tomorrow and there's a little bit of a northeast boost coming in today and heads up box jellyfish still swimming into south shores so we got a first alert for tomorrow and thursday when those trade winds get stronger and like i said wind advisories could be posted for the windier spots still going to be breezy through the weekend but things should be much drier by sunday Families woke up today to devastation from severe weather that stretched thousands of miles. A total of eight states saw everything from violent winds to hail to tornadoes stretching from Texas all the way to Illinois, and the system is still on the move. Omar Villafranca has more. In Barnsdall, parts of the small town are leveled. Some homes ripped to shreds, roofs torn from structures, and a community plunged into darkness. Officials say a suspected tornado barreled through the town of just over a thousand residents last night around 9 p.m., carving a path of damage that left almost nothing untouched. Cinder block buildings were smashed by violent winds. Monday's severe weather outbreak had a far reach from powerful winds in Illinois to hail the size of golf balls in Kansas. A bolt of lightning in North Texas is suspected of sparking this house fire in Plano. Initial arriving crews found a heavy fire and smoke uh, coming from the exterior of the structure. There were reports of a, a loud uh, boom, a thunder strike. And in the Midwest. When we heard the tornado warning, we went to the basement and we heard a lot of noise. A violent storm brought tree limbs bursting through Andrea Kaczynski's kitchen ceiling in Chesterfield, Missouri. Heavy rain caused flash flooding near St. Louis, where about an inch and a half of rain fell in the span of four hours. Wow, the whole street's flooded. That's a first. Power is still out for hundreds of residents here, but the severe weather is not over. More than 50 million Americans are under the threat of severe storms today. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Barnsdall, Oklahoma. A powerhouse halal from Maui says preparing for the Merry Monarch Festival provides valuable life lessons. Chelsea Davis has more. Okay, try that one more time, gentlemen. Down like this. Kumu means teacher in Hawaiian. And that's exactly what Iliahi and Haunani Paredes are. Not just in hula, but in life. The winning happens before and after the competition for us. They're not ordinary kumu. On top of hula, they also work full-time jobs. Smooth. Haunani has worked for the county of Maui for 20 years. Maui. And Iliahi has been a deputy prosecutor for 22 years. Maui. They encourage their haumana to take the lessons they learn in hula and apply them to life. That's how they're going to interview for a job, or that's how they're going to interview for college. Mm -hmm. Or they put that on their college resume, and we are so grateful you know that our kids want to go above and beyond and it's because of hula in fact their miss aloha hula contestant is attending college at dartmouth an ivy league school in total they have 50 olapa competing this year Hello, Ke Kua Okala Au Ala Iliahi has won many awards at the Merry Monarch Festival. But they say their biggest achievement isn't when they hear their names called. When we see a completely different community member in our students, yeah. they're stronger, they're more confident, they're better dancers, they're better people, better community leaders. 
on that Merry Monarch Sunday. That's mm. the reward. That's the reward. That's the award. Yeah, that's the that's award. That's the award. Oh, uh, they say part of their Kule Anna on the Merry Monarch Festival stage is to inspire. And they hope to do exactly that this week. They dedicate their performances to their home. Reporting from Wailuku Maui, Chelsea Davis, Hawaii News Now. Now, if you're flying Hawaiian Airlines to Hilo for the festival, there will be a free way to get around once you land. The county is offering shuttle service. It'll take residents and visitors around Hilo on Thursday and Friday, including the airport, the Civic Center, and Prince Kuhio Mall. You'll need to present your Hawaiian Airlines boarding pass to use the shuttle. And stay tuned with Hawaii News Now for all your Merry Monarch coverage. We have a team en route to Hilo as we speak, and we'll bring you the latest happenings along with extended interviews and more. Let's take one more look outside at Hilo, Hawaii before we say aloha on this Tuesday. We're going to have much more news ahead. First at four, mahalo for watching.